have had like, uh, you know, I talked about in my last video that there's been like an atmospheric river hitting Norway and it's kind of a weather phenomenon that creates warm weather and also a lot of storms and tonight it was like a really really heavy storm we really felt like the whole house was going to blow away so we are kind of outside now to like check what damage has been done Oi. But where was that one? Was that the one that was here? In the ground? Okay, and this is the worst problem. Shit. Where are the rest of the stones? There are many. There are many. Wow! How did they go all the way over here? Wow, that's wild. <laughs> so my helmet has probably been blowing all the way out into the road and somebody has picked it up and left it here. <laughs> Thank you, whoever you are. One of my recent videos where I give our kitchen a makeover has been doing quite well on my channel recently and it means that a lot of you watching are new here, so I wanted to say welcome. It's sort of surprising to me that out of all my videos, that would be the one that took off. I've spent so much time filming outside in nature, waking up early or in the night to head out eager to capture the landscape at the perfect time to share it with you. And then the landscape of my kitchen ends up being the one with the most ice on it. After thinking about it for a while though, I realized that the theme of home has been very important to many of us these years, during lockdowns and home office times. And for me, it has also been an important quest for many years. The quest to find somewhere where I feel a sense of belonging. All the projects I do on the house are in a sense just an expansion of that feeling. A need to nest and to tend to the place that tends to me every day. To anchor myself in something physical. I've moved many times in my life, which in a sense has left me feeling a little bit restless. I grew up in rural areas of eastern Norway, where I have lived with my mother. But at the same time, both my parents are originally from Stavanger, a city on the west coast. And my father lived in Bergen, where I often visited. I also quickly became an outsider in my local school, so my mother let me try a Waldorf school in a nearby village. I was happier there and I got some good friends, even though I still remained left out in my class. 
As a result of not being in the local school, however, I did not get to know many people in the places where we lived. And still, I have this strange feeling when I go to those places, that it is home and it is the place where I grew up, but also it's kind of foreign in a way. But what even is home? I guess we can all agree sort of on the meaning of belonging. But when it comes to the word home, it's a bit more loaded and complicated. I guess for me, it is sort of a question about where is the place that I actually want to spend my life? Because to me, that's quite an important question. And even though that is sort of materialistic, and I guess some people would say that home is something that you have inside of you, I would say that it's sort of a combination of the two. It was uh, very good that we put on those tile stones uh, on the roof yesterday because as I was anticipating it was just a fake spring, you know. Check this out. It's full on snowing again. <laughs> I believe it was a good choice moving here one year ago, even though we didn't have anything here. But I did not feel at home here either, at first. It was winter, it was a hard time in my life, and without work or studies in the town, I felt like there was nothing really anchoring me to the place. Nowhere to meet people, nowhere to really go. And I was walking around restlessly in the closed forests, longing to find somewhere that was not newly planted pine forest, with huge tracks and lots of people walking around. 
I remember coming home to Bendik almost in tears after threading snow for hours and hours, still unable to find a forest that really felt like home in a way. And you know, that was definitely more about how I was feeling inside than how the actual outside world was. Because now I find it kind of funny that I was not able to find a forest that I liked in this landscape. Like, is it really possible to be more spoiled than this? From one thing to the other, now I'm heading over to some of my friends to help them with their bathroom. And they're doing a much bigger renovation. have a bunch of friends here in this town but the few people we are friends with are the best people So I guess home is also a lot about what people you surround yourself with. Town life in Norway isn't always idyllic. There is the possibility of meeting narrow-mindedness and really open-minded people. So I guess I was really lucky that I met really open-minded people here that definitely make my world bigger and broader and not smaller. And in my experience, these people are everywhere in the towns here. It's just a matter of seeking them out. I still am not feeling like I have found a place I belong in a sense. I'm actually pretty sure I'm just one of those people who will always look for that and never find it. Of course, not being tied to a place and 
Having a bit of restlessness has brought me a lot of freedom and I've traveled and definitely had a lot of adventures because of this restlessness. And even though I sometimes envy those people who grew up in a very specific place where probably their ancestors have lived before them and they just really know where their roots are, I don't really feel very sorry for myself. Being able to create a home around yourself and even having a home and deciding where that is, is a huge privilege. Also, I have to say, this place feels more like home than any other place I've lived the last years. 